Well, we're picking up on that comment and some of the others, as you see in the front pages, Abuja has got this one. Well, thank you, Chamberlain. Joining us right now is Zachary Gundu, who is a professor of archaeology at the Amadou Bello University. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. If there's anything we can all agree on, I mean, there's a common thread running through all of the discourse that we have heard so far. It is that these killings are senseless and that government has done very little or nothing uh, to stop them. Or maybe what it is doing, we're yet to see because uh, the killings and the divisions are still running ri riot and um, it doesn't seem like it's going to come to an end. W try to help us make sense of what your reading of all that has been happening is. Well, in a way, if you are the victim, the killings are senseless. But if you are the one doing the killing, it makes sense. Um, a lot of Nigerians don't appreciate our history. They don't also appreciate what has been happening in this country, especially in the past few years. I believe that if people know history, they will know why the Fulanese are doing this. If people know our recent history, they will know that there is an attempt to grab a lot of land from the people of this country for the full and of the whole world. Uh, <clears throat> for people who don't know, the full and have their original homeland in Guinea, that is uh, in Futajalon. And um, they had an outing from Guinea from 1804, the outing in Nigeria was represented by the Osman and Fodio Jihad. It succeeded. There was a caliphate which they established outside even the boundaries of this country because the caliphate from Sokoto, if you go up country, it went into Chad, it went into Niger. And then from independence, we have had about three Fulani leaders who have led this country. But in the original homeland, which is Guinea, the Fulanese have not been allowed to lead Guinea. So Nigeria has become their second preferred homeland, where they are inviting the Fulanese of the whole world to come and claim as their own country. And people should realize this. And if we sit down here on our ancestral lands in this country, and somebody comes in to kill us. It becomes a problem. Let Pro me just say Pro this. Professor, let I have just, to, I'm, I'm afraid I have to interrupt you. No, no, let me just say just, this. Just before you say what you say or what you want to say, I want to ask, how do you have, I mean, how are you able to draw this thread? You have talked about history. We yes. all know that before now, yes, yes we fought into tribal wars. Yes. I mean, there were conquests every yes. now and then. The Benin Empire, for instance, yes. uh, was quite expansive. Yes. Um, and it also, you know, made its own conquest. Yet nobody has been able, whenever Ife Modake is fighting, nobody is talking about prehistorical or, you know, pre-colonial no, wars the, to justify what is happening now. The, the Ife Modake war is a local phenomenon. In Nigeria, what happened when the British people came in? Remember, the caliphate was a pre-colonial phenomenon. And it gave the Fulanese some privileges even over the Hausa states. Because they manipulated Islam to take over the Hausa states. And it gave them some privileges over the Hausa states and other Nigerian groups which they used to raid as slaves. When the British people came in, people who know colonial history will know that they privileged them. They decided to divide and rule this country by privileging the Fulanese over other groups. So what happened is that the Fulanese moved with their privileges from the pre-colonial period into the colonial period. And now that we have independence, they are also moving with the privileges they had under the colonial uh, government into independent Nigeria. And independent Nigeria is not a feudal system. Independent Nigeria cannot allow a group of people to come into this country from all over West Africa and claim this as their own country. What happened during colonialism was that 
the states we have presently became fixated in terms of their boundaries. Well, my question so, is, how do you know that there is an invitation, as you put it, uh, from local Fulanese or Nigerian Fulanese, as it were, uh, to their counterparts and say Guinea? For they, ha they have not hidden that. They have not hidden that. Remember, the governor of Kaduna State has agreed, has admitted that he used state funds in Kaduna to pay Fulani people from outside the country from coming to attack us. Remember that the government is now belatedly saying that the people who are responsible for this are foreign uh, mercenaries. Remember that the Inspector General of Police before this one and the Minister of Agriculture has argued consistently that the people attacking this country are not Nigerians. They are from outside. What this means is that if somebody comes from outside, he's coming at whose instance? Remember where Benue is. Professor, if you come from outside, just, if you no, come from moment. outside, and you go uh, no, right into Benue to attack it, where just, are you coming from? Just before you go, and I mean, there have been other, uh, you know, there have been other plausible um, theories around this. They have talked about how there is an environmental crisis. The fact that even the Lake Chad is drying up and, you know, right now there is a need, I mean, even the desert is encroaching. We, we're all aware of that. And that, you know, pasture that used to be available for cattle is no longer available. Population is exploding. The usual cattle routes are no longer available uh, for cattle to, to go around as they used to, owing to this population explosion and development and civilization. All of this do not matter in the, in the uh, contest of the crisis that we're currently seeing? No, all, all of them matter, but they are not as important as the point I'm making. Remember the so-called cattle routes. They are not today's invention. These are cattle routes which were established when the jihad succeeded and there was a, a full uh, there, there was a Sokoto caliphate. So the cattle routes then were established for the Fulani of the whole West African sub-region to come in and out of the country. Is it just uh, Nigeria that these routes were established? In? No, 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 no. It's not just Nigeria, but, but try to remember what I'm trying to say. In Nigeria, which has become the second preferred homeland of the Fulani, we have more space. Certainly we have more space. But that doesn't mean that people can come from anywhere in the world particularly with this type of criminal intentions and activities to come and attack this Professor, country. Professor, you know, this, this, this uh, scenario that is now playing out in the country, this crisis, has a political dimension. It does, of course, it uh, does. And, and, but, but the question is, where are you looking at it from and what conclusions are, are we drawing? Because in 2015, during the elections, we recall very clearly, some of us who were watching the campaign, that yes. the PDP made very strong allegations against the APC candidate at that time, who is now the president, Mohamed yes, Ubuari, yes, yes. that he had a plan to Islamize the Federal Republic of Nigeria upon his assumption of office. Now, all of a sudden, these uh, Fulani herdsmen are coming in. They say they're Fulani herdsmen are coming into the country. Some of them, some people are saying they're foreign terrorist groups, depending on who you choose to believe. Yes. And now. Uh, there is a, an allegation that this is linked back to a promise, uh, to a, an allegation that was made during the political campaigns. Now, if this is political, what, what is, in your view, what is the leadership behind this movement that's going on right now? Well, let, let me just say one thing quickly. Since, the, uh, since our independence, any time we have a democratic dispensation, the Fulanese, because of the way they organize, normally cut deals with every other prominent politician who is likely to be the president of this country. That is one reason why at a point they gave Jonathan to be their own patron, something like that. They dressed him up, they gave him a certificate every person knows. Of course, Muhammad Buhari has a very interesting distinction which we must appreciate. First, during the PT, PTF days, during the budget period, you know he was in charge of the PTF. And he is the one who attempted to resuscitate the grazing reserves that were established in this country. We are just happy that 
uh, Abacha died, and this plan could not set through. But secondly, Muhammad Buhari, who is the current president, has also championed the interest of Fulani Hezman. At a point from a few years back, he went to Oyo, and he was trying to query the state governor then why the Fulani people were killed in Oyo state. As a statesman, he was doing that. And then currently, if he's the president, other Fulani interests have actually said that they put him there. So if this thing is happening, and uh, he I mean, is not in a say, position. Let say, me just make this point, sorry, please, Professor, please. I, I mean, don't. I, 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 let me just make this point. I, 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 I'm afraid Quickly. I have to interrupt you, okay, Professor, you. because I mean, some of the things that you have said, we are we are all here in, in this country. I mean, you also have to be very circumspect. The things that we're saying. I mean, when we talk about empirical evidence, when you say that a group of people put. The president there. Well, they claim, they claim so. They, they claim, claim so. but you were they in claim this. So. I mean, I want to believe that you're not stranger to this country. Yes. Yeah, you, you've been in Amadou Bello yes. University. The president has contested a number of times. Yes. And it was at this last time that he won. Yes. And it was uh, through elections that yes, were. Yes, he did, he did. He uh, that were said to be credible. So when he you did. say that a group of people put the president there, should we really be going with insinuations like that? You no, know where the insinuations, if, if, if a president comes, this Hezman crisis is actually threatening the future of this country. And tell me just one single thing which this president has said, which will convince every Nigerian that he takes the lives of Nigerians as a priority. This is a president, immediately he came into power. Some northern governors saw him and put pressure on him about cattle wrestling. And you know what the president did? He put on his camouflage, he went to Zamfara, he launched a military uh, exercise to contain cattle rustling. Just wondering, now that you've just mentioned cattle rustling, who are those people rustling cattle here in Nigeria? If the Fulanese, the local Fulanese have been affected, you know, their cattle being stolen, I mean, we've seen many operations, even in Kano, of thousands of cattle being recovered from those who are rustling cattle, how can you then say that these same Fulani people are inviting other Fulani people from other ethnic Actually, nationalities to take over land here in Nigeria? Look, I think it is important for you not only to be in this studio. The person who is the king of wrestlers is in a forest in Zafara. He calls himself Buharin Daji. He calls himself Buharin Daji. And every person knows. And people in government is if is of what ethnic group that's he is Fulani. He is Fulani. So, so why is he there then rustling the cattle? Because they are using they are using that as an excuse to attack other people. We are dealing with people who are strategizing. We are dealing with people who are master strategists. They are just using this as excuses. Professor, you know, this morning. There has been some specificity now attached to the notion that foreigners have invaded Nigeria. Yes. Now, they have now specifically stated it is Islamic State, according to security reports. In your view, is this something that has multiple strands, or is it just, uh, is it just very kind of single-stranded when you talk about the factors that have come together? Uh, I'm sorry, when you talk about the forces that have come in purportedly into Nigeria to create this kind of mayhem? Well, I have made my point. I'm not a security person. I'm just a teacher. But the truth of the matter is that this thing has been going on consistently for several years. It is just very sad and unfortunate, but that's how Nigeria works. That the security people will be coming now belittledly when the attention of every person is being drawn to this fact and every person is becoming quite quite clear on the fact that if we are not careful, this will lead to the destruction of this country. The point I'm making is that even in the past, we knew that the people who were coming in were foreigners. They were foreign elements. But you see, the interesting thing is that if you come from outside and then you go deep into the country, like to a place like Banwa, it means that there are local people supporting you. And we know that the people who have been attacking Benue have been attacking Benue from 
uh, the, the, the state that is uh, uh, neighboring to Benue, they come in and they attack Benue through Awe and through Doma. Professor, if we agree that this, these, these, these terrorist incidents are, are as a result of the movement of these people permeating through the country, does it not, just by logic, does it not make sense to create settlements where these people would have to be contained, essentially, in various states through this cattle colony approach? No, no, no. The cattle colony is just rubbish. It's, it's, it's extremely rubbish. Mm. Uh, what we have done in Banwa, and people, people, we are in Banwa, so we support what has been done. If you want to produce livestock, keep them in ranches. That is the way to go. The Fulani cow, we eat it just because we have no choice. Otherwise, the meat is not good. Because you can't take a cow from outside the country. You trek with a cow to Lagos, to Port Harcourt, and expect quality meat. You can't do that. You cannot expect quality milk and other dairy products from that type of cow. You have to ranch a cow. If you ranch a cow, then you can provide good feeding for the cow. You can also provide good health facilities for the cow. So the way to go is just to do ranching. Mm -hmm. There are people who say that this ranching is uh, just a facade. In other words, you know, the people who actually need the land will never get the land. When this type of suspicion and animosity, as it were, uh, reigns against a particular group of people or reigns around them, how, you know, certain is it that they will be able to that, get that, that, land that, that is not true if you go to Mambila, uh, the people who have bought land in Mambila are the rich people of this country it is the rich people who keep who own the cattle they can ranch the cattle they can buy land no matter at what cost but, because they have the money is that right in all circumstances are we saying that poor people do not also own cattle amongst the fallen me. No, it's not only Fulani herdsmen who have cattle. I'm just asking. Yes, poor people can own, but poor people should keep this cattle in enclosures on their land. That is what we are saying. So my, my question also is, if you suspect that this is an attempt to take over lands, what are the chances that if people come and say, well, we want to buy land, that you will be willing, uh, you know, that the communities will be willing no, to I give have, them land? I have said, people who own this cattle have the wherewithal to buy the land. And they have bought land in this country for other purposes. P so why is it difficult for them to buy land P for ranching? And these people are who? You talked about the rich men in this country. Are they all Fulani? They are not all Fulani, but the Fulani people who own cattle have sufficient money to buy Land. It, let me just give you, let me give you an example, something you may not know. There's an NGO in Kaduna called the Pastoral Reserve. Called the Pastoral Reserve. In the past five years or so, the Pastoral Reserve has put together about five billion, according to them, to try to establish grazing reserves in some states of the country. If you have five billion naira there, why wouldn't you talk about uh, uh, establishing ranches? I'm curious, Professor, if you say then that this is about political power, this is about finding a home for the Fulanese, I mean, making Nigeria their second home, yes. how does ranching solve that political problem? For us in Benue, what the governor has consistently said and what we believe is the correct position is that there's no land to give the Fulanese of the whole world just to come and be grazing in this in place. If they have to graze in Benue, it has to be on ranches. They have killed too many of our people. They have caused a lot of problems. And mind you, even the people who are not killed, if you destroy their farms, if you destroy their homes, it means that it is genocide professor, we are professor, talking about. Professor, when you say they, Essentially, what you're doing is painting a very broad stroke over a number of people, and that can be very dangerous because if, we, if, if, if nativist tendencies emerge and we begin to say they, all of, so all of these people it is, are now terrorists, it is not, it's, it's very, it, it very is, dangerous. It is and not, not dangerous. It's, 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 it's not dangerous. 
is not dangerous because the umbrella bodies of the Fulani have indirectly claimed responsibility for this. They have threatened everybody. They have said, blood will flow. And then the patrons of these Fulani groups who are ranking traditional rulers have also supported them. So if the patrons are supporting them and saying that they are not doing this, if the umbrella bodies of the Fulanis themselves are saying that they are taking responsibility, responsibility for this, but that why should I not that, be broad-minded? That, 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 that presupposes that the, the, the purported security reports that the IS has a hand in the invasion of these people that, that presupposes that that's completely false. That this is simply an ethnic agenda within Nigeria. Well, I have told you before, this thing has been happening for more than five years. Where were these security people when this thing was happening? Why are they bringing this report just uh, yesterday? But I have told you I'm not a security person. But I doubt why they are bringing this security report now. Why are they bringing it now? I have one final question, Professor. If this is indeed, as you say, an ethnic agenda amongst actors within this country, why is it that th these people have been doing what they've been doing now for decades, really for centuries, and all of a sudden it's becoming extremely violent? Well, it's becoming extremely violent because they are being emboldened. They are emboldened. I told you that they strike this with every presidential candidate or every president that comes into the country. So as they strike these deals, things work for them. They started this in the plateau, and they boasted that they will go to Benue. They have come to Benue. They are in all parts of the country. The whole idea is just to choke the country. Once you choke the country, then people will be afraid and say that let us just stop this violence and give uh, these colonies and give these reserves. Remember, Aoudoukbe was not talking about colonies when he came first. He was talking about grasses to come from Brazil. Forgetting that they have developed grasses in this country, in agricultural research institutes, that are good for this herdsman. When the grasses thing failed, he went to grazing reserves and stock routes. When that one failed, he's not talking about colonies. There's only one uh, example or template of uh, colonies in this world. It is in Pakistan. And we, 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 the man doesn't really know what he's talking about. Professor, he doesn't. Ma the Mayati Allah have claimed, uh, they've made an unverified claim that 800 of their people have been killed and that nobody's talking about it. What do you have to say about that? Well, I don't know. They are talking about what happened uh, in some other state, not in Banwa. But let me tell you one thing. Let me just tell you one thing. If this country is to survive and develop as a prosperous country. Even one life is important. If for whatever reasons they killed so many of their people and they didn't want to talk, if they kill my brother, just one person, I should talk if I'm able to talk. So I don't know why they didn't talk. I can't hold forth for them. But the important thing is that the lives of the citizens of this country are very important. And I think, I think that Fulani people, particularly those who are heading cows in the bush, they must thank Governor Samuel Oton for liberating them. Because two questions are important if their liberation must be complete. Why is it that the children of emirs? The children of Fulani politicians and the children of Fulani technocrats, why are they not heading cows with them in the bush? Mm. Why are the children of these big people not fighting in the bush for Fulani rights? Mm. Why? Oh, Professor, that's where we'll have to leave it. Professor Zachary Gundu is a professor of archaeology at the Amadou Bello University.